Vida, what's up? It's time for another math book video. Aren't you excited? So you already saw my collection of mathematical children's books, which is only a subset of my massive collection of math-related books. I own a ton of books in general, but aside from all of those math children's books, I also own an entire shelf of math textbooks from my college days and that I've gathered along the way and another entire other shelf of math-related books that I enjoy. And I'm going to share some of my favorites of those with you today. By some of my favorites, I mean almost all of them. I've also separated these into categories, and I'll kind of try and recommend if you should read them if you don't have a heavy math background or if you should leave it unless you have a heavy math background kind of thing. The first, I'm just going to talk about this book because it doesn't go in a category with any of the others. It's so unique. The book is Flatland, A Romance of Many Dimensions by Edwin A. Abbott. This one is a recommendation for anyone to read. There's also a movie version of it that's animated and really cute that I also own. Written in 1884. It's actually an allegory about the English class system at the time. So it's very interesting, but it is written about it's written about these shapes that live in a world called flatland which is two-dimensional in this world there are triangles squares pentagons hexagons shapes with increasing numbers of sides up to the priests which are circles circles have infinite sides and they are at the highest of the end of the class system triangles are the lowest but in the book um women are actually line segments they don't even have sides. They're lower than everyone else. It's about a square, and a lot of strange things happen to this square. Um, he is gets to have adventures in point land, which has no dimensions, line land, which has uh, one dimension, and he also gets to have an adventure in space land, which is three dimensions, which would be our world. Um, and it kind of opens his eyes to see that there's more beyond what he thought there was. I have talked for like two minutes about just this book, but it's fantastic. I especially recommend the movie, um, which is a little easier to consume, but the book is also fantastic. The next category is cute little miscellany books, the first of which is The Joy of Pi by David Blattner, which is literally just a book of like facts and history about the number pi. The second in this category is Number Freak from 1 to 200, The Hidden Language of Numbers Revealed by Derek Niederman, and it goes through the numbers 1 from 200 and gives interesting facts about each one. It's really interesting, um, like a lot of mathematicians feel that different numbers have different kind of personalities and things like that, and this book really brings that kind of stuff out because each number has kind of unique things about it that you can learn and know. Both books from that category would be for people with little to no math background. Let's do the biographies category. That's kind of a loose category title. But first, we have Fermat's Enigma by Simon Singh. Fermat's Last Theorem is one of the most famous theorems in mathematics, and it took 350 years to solve his last theorem. The story goes that he wrote the last theorem in the margin of one of his papers and said, I have a proof for this, but I can't fit it in this margin. And for 350 years, people were basically like, what the heck is this proof? This is the story of Andrew Wiles, who finally was the one to solve it. And it goes through the entire story, Andrew Wiles' story, but putting in the history of the rest of the solving of the theorem along the way. It's very well done. There are a few parts that get really deep mathy in it, but if you were interested, it would not take away from the story for you to skip over those parts that are more technical. Next we have Zero, The Biography of a Dangerous Idea by Charles Beifa. This would be a recommendation for anyone. It's literally the history of the number zero. Um, we did not always have a number for zero. It became controversial. It talks about how the church comes into this and brings in a lot of really interesting mathematical ideas. Um, some of them get a little complicated, but I think that it explains them well enough that you would be able to understand them. This is my favorite non-Harry Potter book of all time. 
The Sand Reckoner by Gillian Bradshaw. It is a fictionalized story of the life of Archimedes, who is my favorite mathematician. Archimedes was super obsessed with math and loved everything to do with math and didn't care if there was any practical purpose for any of the math that he was doing. This is literally as a novel about his life. Um, most of the events in it are true, but the account of them is, of course, fictionalized because he lived so long ago that we don't really know how all these things happened. But it's a great read, fantastic read. Read it, please. And the last book in this category is Sylvia Nassar's A Beautiful Mind, which is obviously a movie. You've probably heard of the movie. Maybe you haven't even seen the movie, but this is the book it is based on. Um, it's a biography of the mathematician John Nash. He was a mathematical genius, and he had struggled with mental illness, and that is part of why he is so famous, is because um, he really struggled with the, this mental illness, and yet his contributions to the world of math were so great that so many people tried to help him um, deal with it and get out of it, and it's his is just a really great story. Um, this is a very long book. It really doesn't go into math technical stuff very much, but it, it's a good read, but um, the, you can watch the movie if you want to. Watch the movie. If you're interested in more, read the book. Okay, so I started filming this video thinking that I was going to take you on one big long tour of all of my math books, and now I'm thinking that maybe not. I'm going to split this into two. Let me know if you take any of these suggestions and read any of these books. I would love to know if you enjoyed them as much as I did. Let me know if you can think of any other math books that I should read. Leave me a comment. See you tomorrow.